Today, we're going to talk about sticking things together. Stick around. Welcome to leaving the bread bag open and the entire family wants sandwiches for lunch. In today's video, we're going to talk about sticking things together. I notice it quite a bit in the forums and I see it in Facebook a lot. A lot of people ask the question, how do I stick my parts together? What glue should I use for the resin? How do I glue these pieces? Well, today I'm going to show you exactly how. Actually, I'm just going to show you a couple of products that will work perfectly for sticking your resin prints and 3D printed parts together. Gluing things is actually a science and using that science to our advantage, we can make sure that we stick the things correctly and make sure that they stick together well. When it comes to gluing parts, there is a couple of choices that I have for the specific products that I like to use for gluing resin and for gluing PLA. We print our models in different materials and different materials are going to require different products to stick them together. And since their models are not functional parts, most of the time you can get away with whatever glue sticks to whatever part you're using. As they're going to sit on the shelf, they're not really going to be tampered with and chances are they may not fall apart. However, a couple of years down the line, these parts may start to fail and you may have models or some parts of your models falling off the shelf. And this is not the ideal situation. Nobody likes their models to fall off the shelf. And in this case, I'm going to explain to you a couple of the products that I use to stick my models together. And for the information that I have about glues and how to use them, I call upon my 15 years of remote control aircraft building experience. And during that time, I've seen many things fall apart during the worst times that they can fall apart. Sometimes I've had wings fall off aircraft because I used the wrong glue in a haste. So I used that knowledge that I gained over the years of building aircraft in order to make my modeling experience even better nowadays. And so I treat a lot of my models as if they were about to fly for the first time of their life. And I make sure that those models are stuck together as gloriously well as I can possibly make them. So there are multiple ways to stick a model together, depending on what kind of part it is that you're sticking. In general, when it comes to resin and PLAs, super glue or cyanoacrylate is going to be your best friend for this situation. There is different kinds of super glues and of course you can use whichever one is easiest for you to get in your area, but I'm going to show you what I use for my models. This is one of the super glues that I use. This super glue is a thick version of the same super glue which you can buy also in a thin version. Thin and thick you say? Not to worry, I'll explain exactly what that means. Some super glues come really thick out the bottle and other super glues are super thin. Usually the cheap super glues that you buy in the tube is the thin super glue. Not always. Sometimes on those tubes they will say gel. If it says gel it's usually the thick version. So this is more like a gel than what this thin super glue is. Why would I want thick super glue though? That's a good question. You want thick super glue because this stuff gets everywhere. Once you start using super glue, you're likely to stick your fingers to each other. You're likely to stick everything you have on your desk to your desk and you're likely to ruin your clothes. This is because super glue runs like it has million legs and it doesn't stay on the place where you've put it. When you use a thick super glue, it doesn't run nearly as badly. So knowing this, we can use this to our advantage. If you're sticking general parts, I use my thick super glue because I can stick it on an area, it stays where I placed it, and I can place those two parts together, hold them for a few seconds, and it holds. There is a downside to using the thick super glue over the thin one in that particular situation, and the downside is that you may put too much super glue on the surface, and when you push the two parts together, it can ooze around the edges, and this is not an easy thing to clean up, especially if you start using tissues and stuff to try wipe it off. Your tissues may stick to the product, and that's going to end up in a bad time. So in order to counteract this, what I do is I make sure I use a small amount of the thick super glue on 99.9% .9 of the parts that I stick together. This is on my resin parts as well as the PLA parts. This will be a super strong bond, especially for what we're doing with our models. However, there is many times when the thin super glue is your friend. If you have a part that's deep inside or is too difficult to get to because the part is within, one of those good examples would be sticking a magnet in. If you can't get the glue inside, one of those examples would be sticking a magnet in. When you stick the magnet in, I'd use I usually would use the thick super glue. I'd also build a sort of a bit of a cradle underneath with some putty so that the glue could, has something to stick to. However, sometimes to make that bond a little bit stronger, you may want to add a bit of super glue around the edge 
and that's when thin super glue is going to be your best friend because it has a runny characteristic you can run it around the edge of something and it will seep into that edge a hell of a lot easier than what the thick super glue would do if i were to buy one over the other i would buy the thick super glue first because the thick super glue is the one that i use in 99 percent of my joints but if you have the spare money, it's always worth getting a thin super glue to go along with your thick super glue. And if you notice, I have a rather large thick super glue and I have a really small thin super glue because the thin one is the one I use the least and the thick is the one that I use the most. While we're on the topic of super glues, I've got something that I can show you that may make your life a little bit easier if you're tired of holding parts together waiting for them to dry, especially for those fiddly bits. There is a thing called a CA accelerator. This also can go by the name of Zap Kicker or whatever the product is that you may find in your area. So the CA Accelerator usually comes in a bottle that looks something like this and it's a spray on applicator. What you would do with this part is you would glue the area you want glued, stick the two parts together while holding them you'll spray a small spritz of this accelerator onto those parts. This instantly turns that CA this will instantly turn your wet CA glue into solid dry glue within a few seconds. One of the things that I have noticed is that resin is porous and it absorbs the super glue. The other thing that I've noticed is that resin with super glue on tends to dry a lot quicker than certain parts that I've tried gluing, for example, like plastics. And so my friends, if you're looking to use a super glue and an accelerator, we're gonna go with a thick super glue in general, a thin for getting into spots that you can't get the glue to, and an accelerator for when you're just too impatient to wait for those parts to dry. One of the downsides of using a CA glue is that if you've already painted a part and you use CA glue, what can happen is that CA drives with a white sort of powdery film over the top and this can 100% ruin your paint job. So do be careful with the application of CA glues. So for some instances, you really wanna be sure that none of that white powdery stuff is gonna be visible and this is one of those reasons why you would use this other version of glue that I'm gonna show you. And that is gonna be two part epoxy resin. For this one, I use a five minute epoxy. If I were building a remote control aircraft, I usually use a 40 to an hour epoxy. That time is what refers to the length that it takes for the glues to set. So what you'll do is mix two parts together. In this instance, it's one equal part to one equal part. What will happen is that glue will start to harden and seal over time. The time refers to how long that's gonna happen. So a five minute epoxy is gonna do that a lot faster than what a 40 minute epoxy will do. However, a five minute epoxy only takes five minutes to bond. This means that the bond is not as strong as what a 40 minute epoxy would be. And I know that this is a lot of science to take in, but there's nothing to think about it other than 40 minutes is not necessary for 90% of what we're gonna do in this situation. Where will I use the epoxy? I'll use the epoxy on parts, such as where I glued her feet to the base. This is because this is one of the main load bearing parts. So we would rather have a stronger bond down at the bottom here than what there is gonna be around her waist, for example. Gluing her arms on, I use just plain super glue. Gluing her waist to her thighs, just plain super glue. Gluing her feet to the base, I use two part epoxy. And this makes this a solid bond and that part is not going to come off and this way I can be confident moving this model around knowing that it's safe and glued to its base. Something to take note of when you use any of these glues. Most of them have very dangerous fumes, specifically CA glue and specifically when you use a zap kicker or an accelerator with it. So be careful to not breathe these fumes in and use these glues in a well ventilated area. The other thing to take note of is that most of these glues dry or harden using an exothermic reaction. This means that the glue itself heats up when it is drying. And so you need to be careful in certain situations, some plastics and some resins are not happy to be heated up and they can warp if they heat too far. Specifically, if you use cyanoacrylate and you use an accelerator, those parts can heat up to the point that they even produce a smoke. 
The heat is so much that it can burn your fingers. So be extremely careful to not get any of it on your fingers when you use that accelerator. Both of these types of glues that I've showed you are both sandable types of glues. So you can use the glue and if you need to, sand it straight after you've stuck it on. Before I forget, while we're at it, there is one other way you can glue your parts together. However, I don't suggest this way because it's just so messy and it's really not worth the effort of trying to hold parts together and use a light and all the rest of the things just to get a part to stick together. I would use this method only to fill gaps. Perhaps you stuck a part together and there's a thin little gap between those two parts. I would use this method to fill that gap and that's about all I'd use this for. And that method is to use the same resin that you printed your product in. So if you use the resin, you rub it on one side, perhaps rub it on the other side, stick the two parts together, use a UV light as much as you can, you're not going to get it to the center of those parts. So in theory, all you're doing is gluing the outer edge and not the inner edge, probably leaving a bunch of uncured resin on the inside there. There is no way to get to that. I don't like that way. However, a few people have suggested that and it is a possible way of gluing things. One way you could use that, perhaps for small little parts that may have broken off, and you may use that to stick together, but I've never had a problem using super glue to do that exact same job with a lot less mess, a hell of a lot less effort. You're already holding two parts together, so where the hell are you gonna put a freaking torch now? You're gonna have your torch in your mouth, you're holding a torch and you're going, Arr! it's just, use a super glue, man. Gluing things is an integral part of our hobby, and I hope that all the information that I've given you in this video is gonna help you make the right decisions for what you're gonna use to glue your parts in the future. And if that video gave you some information you thought was useful, or you thought your friends could use some of that information, please do be sure to give the video a like and possibly share it with them. And if you really liked it that much, why don't you consider giving us a subscription? Because that's how I say it now. For every one subscription I get, I will have one more subscriber. All of these things you do help to support the channel in many ways that you cannot see behind the scenes. And I do appreciate all of the comments and all of the reactions that I have on all my videos. There's one more thing we have to do before we get on to the dolphin noise. We have some new patrons which we need to shout out right now. Shane, Gallimore, Varna, Greece, Varna, Grece, John, Ark Deacon, and Junior Assis. Thank you guys for being my newest patrons. With your guys' memberships, I will be saving the money so that I can get an exclusive custom sculpt made just for our patrons and the people who support this channel. Unfortunately, this will take a while as sculpting things is not a cheap expense. So, if you would like to be part of our Patreon and part of our Discord where you can speak to me directly and personally, where I'll give the best of my advice as I possibly can, all you have to do is follow the link down below and join the Patreon. These are the coolest people in town. And this is the part of the video where there is only one thing left to do. If you didn't like it, just fall. From having no video to I have a video. Thank you for coming. Please come again soon.